Brad Kugler gave me this cool direct mail 2.0 mug plus some other Here we come. swag. <clears throat> So I told him I'd use it. I'll use your mug, too, on here. Here's Johnson Direct, my friend Grant Johnson. It only has it on one side, though, which is not so good if I'm going to be right-handed. So you want to put it on both sides if you're going to send me a mug. And I've got a bunch of them here from different marketing places around the, around the country and the world. Uh, here's one from Carol Worthington Le Levy. And a creative. She's very creative, <clears throat> although she's mostly retired now. And I have one from the uh, Kansas City Direct Marketing Association. Not just for posterity, but... So if you're out there and you want some more publicity from the WDMA, fighting for direct mail and direct marketing every day, okay, then send me a mug. It's as simple as that. Right, Brad? Okay, here we go. So let's start with something crazy. This is one of the best, <laughs> one of the all-time best commercials of all time from 2006. And you figure it out. It's a new Coast Guard training recruit. It's my sector. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. They'll do fine. Left in the back takes his coffee. Mayday, mayday. Hello, okay. can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, over. We are sinking. We are sink. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? <laughs> what are you thinking about? Right, improve your English. Uh, you know, if you're going to sail off the coast of Germany, you might want to say, Achtung, Achtung. <laughs> das ist kaputt. <laughs> Gotten Himmel. It's <laughs> about all the German I know. <laughs> but you might try some German. <laughs> oh, brother, Dumkopf. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, we got to have a little fun here. We can't just be serious as we know but i thought i'd do a little international flair since my next my next article is from gunderson direct off of their blog from just the other day and i found this which made me think a little bit okay so sarah stone says i stop working on vacation and you can too now as a what what has, what has become a solopreneur or whatever they call it, a solopreneur. <laughs> I'm not completely alone, but I I am. <laughs> a lot of it rests on my shoulders, and so I've been trying to get on the Gunderson team. I told Kim at Namoa. <laughs> I told Jeff. I told Mike. I told Alexa. I don't know Sarah, but I'm willing to say hi, Sarah. Thank you for this. But anyway, because I don't have a team, I always work on vacation. You know, it's not it wasn't so bad. I had kids and I would take my computer to the pool. Fortunately, I got into my own business just about the time laptops got actually portable. And so, um, yes, this we cross all that out. There's no work life balance for me. But if you notice, I'm not on live at 10 in the morning today. And that's because I had some work-life balance to do. And, uh, yeah, and I won't get into it. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't any fun, but it was something that needed doing, maybe. Uh, so unplugging from work is important. Vacations benefit not only your health, but also your future productivity. So that's great. Make your personal time off extra guilt-free. This is probably the most important one. By setting your colleagues up for success and returning the favor when they go away. So when my clients go away, we always cover for them. But for some reason, they've never covered for me. <laughs> they still call up and say, help, help. The printer can't do it in this time slot. We need it, we need it a week earlier. A week earlier. <laughs> You know, it takes us about a week to do these, and we hadn't started. Yes, I know, but can you do it over the weekend in two hours? Yeah, we'll manage somehow. 
Luckily, there's extra time, you know, between like 5 o'clock in the afternoon and 5 in the morning that we usually get a lot of the client work-life balance done. Anyway, so in September of 2021, Sarah went to Portugal. And I, this was the scary part. Uh, with a traveling companion friend who ha hadn't I hadn't seen in years. And being back in the world after a two-year hi hiatus. Yes, that's amazing. <clears throat> But most important, I completely unplugged. This is the part that's amazing. I left my laptop home, turned off my work notifications, and totally avoided Slack. Now that I have, I do have an account, but <laughs> I have avoided that. None of my clients have pulled me into that one yet. Uh, I didn't even log in to share photos of Portuguese mailboxes and post offices. Though, Sarah, you owe us a blog showing us what the Portuguese post offices and mailboxes look like so i'm i'm hoping though you didn't post them last year you're gonna put up or maybe there is one already on the gunderson blog i didn't see it but if there is need to put a link okay radical maybe but according to a 2021 study and unlike just about everybody i ever i ever feature there's a there's actually a footnote of what study there is Okay, 82% of American workers per reported working while on vacation. And 90 said they check work messages and emails during their vacation time. Yeah, my, my email is my work email. <clears throat> I mean, you know, like I said, a solopreneur. So she gives us a footnote, and that will be available on WDMA.org in a few minutes. So more studies, vacation can improve focus and productivity and even boost heart health, increase your capacity to learn, reduce stress. I don't know, I've traveled a lot and it's usually quite stressful. It's stress. It's less stressful when you get home. Like the last time when we went to Italy for three weeks, that was about as close as I got to getting away from the office because there just wasn't much for internet. <laughs> anyway, where we were anyway. And so, uh, yee, yeah, but anyway, so a lot of stress in that in Italy, and we kicked it off with a tour of Rome on scooters, and I was the only non-Roman driver in the bunch. Everybody else was Roman, and, and they knew how to scoot between the cars, and I had to keep up, or we were lost. They didn't tell us where we were going next. They just said, let's go, and then off they went. And I had no way of knowing if we would have lost the tour. That's the kind of tour that gives you a little stress. It was a it was a riot. I had a great time. My wife, not so much on the back of my scooter. She should have got on with one of the Romans. Okay, so anyway, uh, Portuguese adventure, renewed, renewed appreciation for what's really important. And that is working for a company that supports your personal time off. And that's where this gets great. I was do, doing this guilt-free because my talented and able colleagues covered my accounts as I will do for them the next time they take a trip or a day off. Gunderson directs unlimited personal time off policy. No idea what that means, how that could even work. Um, I was just excited about the taco truck every couple months. <laughs> Three tacos. They actually encourage us to use personal time off policy. Unlimited. Man, oh man, no wonder they always look so relaxed when I talk to them. <clears throat> Meant I didn't have to choose between this trip and other time off I wanted or needed. So anyway, Mike, I'm here to help. <laughs> I heard you'd like to get into more first-party data, and that would be fun. And, uh, and happy to fly out ASAP. So yes, it took a while to dig out from the pile of unread emails and get back up to speed on all my projects, but the benefits of a vacation without worries, that's something, like I said, I've never really tried that. <laughs> I, would really, I would really like to. Uh, so anyway, if you need me, I'm here for you, Mike. <laughs> Mike and the team. And here's the footnotes that are available uh, from WDMA.org in short order after the show. And I also, I was I was uh, looking for some, you know, exciting material. So I went to some of the supporters of the WDMA. 
I'm after David to join, for heaven's sakes. Mike's a member. Um, so, but, but this was a good article. How to increase direct res- mail response by 20 or 30% with only two simple changes. And it also dovetails with something I'm, I'm going to be talking about. <clears throat> so as a print leader, do you hear these things? How do we track what's coming in from our direct mail campaign? And, and you know, that to me is astounding because direct mail invented tracking, really invented it. You know, it was the Direct Mail Marketing Association when I got in. And all we talked about was how to track. You know, if you're going to do radio, you could say ask for Susie on our phone number or a special phone number. If you're going to do uh, newspaper, how do you do that? How do you do all the different media? But mostly where we learned was from mail. Okay. Did we get the key code? And now, because everyone trusts Google as their own as their main Bible for tracking or Facebook or whatever, mail is outside that loop, so they don't think that mail knows mail can be tracked. Or we're not seeing the leads we want coming from our, from our direct mail. And sometimes that's the attribution. You know, and why do I say that? Because you know, oftentimes the mail drives action. And so, like this mailing piece, which I got the other day, this is the Smell-O-Vision one. Uh, that's not the right name. What's it called? It's called Rub and Smell Varnish from Centisphere. And Matthew shared my article or shared my review of this, which is great. But on here, you know, there's no way to register or anything except if you – there's a printingunited.com. I'm assuming it goes – to this registration for Printing United, the conference, and there's a QR code, okay, both of which will take you to the web. Now, if you you know who got mailed, over here, the address, and you know who came to your website, and you can connect those two dots, then you know that the mail had, well, you don't know for sure, but you you could assume causal influence, right? On the other hand, if all you do is collect up how many leads come in and don't match it back to the mailing, you you probably won't know. Now, you might, with that QR code, make it a special trackable QR code that first makes sure that you know that it came from this mailing piece. That's another way to do it, right? But if you don't do that, then the match back can still work. It's not the end of the world, although it's kind of dumb. <laughs> but anyway, and so then what? what's the consequence? They say, we're going to focus more on digital channels. And literally, I've been fighting this battle for now 27 years. Since 1995, people have told me, well, direct mail is expensive. We're going to go digital. Many of those companies do not exist anymore. But funny thing, a lot of the mailers I've worked with not only have stayed the course, but are growing. Go figure. How is that even possible? Well. Uh, So direct mail is under attack, but I would contend that if you can't show how mail is driving traffic, oh, back, let's loop back for a second. So if you don't have a trackable URL, if you don't have a trackable QR code, then what will happen is your visitor, especially if they don't buy right away, your visitor to your website will get a first party cookie. Your website will drop something on there, and then your attribution team will say, Well, the first time we've seen this person is from the website. So that's probably where they came from. Or they'll say, well, I'm not sure about that URL. I'll just type in Print United without the .com and with a space or something. And then they'll get Google sending them to your website. So then your attribution team will say, well, we don't know why, but they searched for Printing United. And lo and behold... Google gets credit. Never mind, it was track. It was triggered by the mailing piece. So what do you do to prove value? Direct mail must prove value. And you know what? For me, the most fun is the most fun is working with a CFO who doesn't care 
10 cents about marketing per se. They just want to know what's their return on investment? What's their return on ad spend? What's their bottom line EBITDA profit per piece? Okay, and when you can show that, they are a lot nicer. <laughs> They're a lot nicer, they pay faster, and they want to give you money. <laughs> So don't complain to me that your budget's too small to do mail. It's because you're not doing mail. Duh. So anyway, what do you do? Well, David Rosendahl says you use personalized URLs, pearls, and personalized QR codes. Now, what does that mean? Okay. What it means is that let's here. Where's my where's my phone? Let's track this QR code and see what we get. Okay, I know this is going to stretch it out a little bit, but we're, we haven't gone that long. Here is the QR code. Oh, my gosh, look at this. It's got a whole bunch of crazy-looking letters, which I basically just saw. Okay, and, and now to the user, it goes right to the Print United website, and it says attend. Okay, allow Print United to use your location. No, don't allow. Forget it. But the URL, let's see if I can find the URL. No, that was just a handoff URL, okay? So that URL will track to the mailing piece. And Brad told me he was handling the URLs over at Mail 2.0. So it, we know that this is a at least a tracking URL. What we don't know is if it also tracks to me. It also contains the John Miglosh at Miglosh Marketing, okay? My guess is that it does, okay? And so this is exactly, didn't think about this, but this is exactly what David Rosendahl is talking about. Now, just my going there, just doing this, they now know that I responded to that piece, okay? I may or may not go to the show, but they know that I'm a lead that responded to their mailing piece. Okay, so how do you justify mail? That's how. Now, that said, this is not just so simple. <laughs> I mean, what it means is, is that for every mailing piece you send out, every address that you send out, you need to create a new unique QR code. And Market Builder down in Arizona that I work with quite a bit also does this. And they even have the capability of say in your catalog you want to tie back the item that I'm interested in if I use the, the the QR code it not only tells what who it's who used it but also it tells what item I'm looking at and there's some great more advanced applications Mike Gunderson and I've been talking about how to use that but anyway it's but so if you have 50 items in your catalog and you have a million pieces of mail going out with that catalog. That would mean 50 million, not just personalized QR codes, but personalized it to the item QR codes. It would be 50 million of those to keep straight and to do it in a timely fashion when I look up the QR code. So there's a lot of ways to track what you want to do. I got a great email today from a company that, I had been, I've been talking to for years. They had a nice catalog. They stopped it. They want to do it again, but they want to do it right. And this is the kind of thing that you need to, to think about. You need to think about tracking because mail can give you the most direct causal link. And just for fun, we can also take our list. Let's say we've got a list of 100,000 people we want to mail to, or maybe it's only 10,000. We can take 10% of that, a thousand of them, and say, well, let's not mail them a mailing piece, especially if it's first party data. Those are our customers. Because the other guys down the hall in the email marketing said, well, we do all that work already anyway. You know, or the web guys, we've, we've got a beautiful website. They're going to mentally, telepathically know to go there. So we can track the ones we mailed, the ones we didn't. It's called the holdout test. And what we'll find is we'll find that the ones we don't mail, generally show up much less often and that proves the incremental benefit of mail which your cfo will love have a great day like and share 
especially if you were mentioned in this article, give it a share and show the rest of your friends. They'll know you're smart. Bye-bye.